All right, guys, welcome to episode two of the Beggar Build series. This is the 2013 Street Glide I recently bought, and it needs a lot of stuff done to it. So we're gonna do a lot of trick stuff to make it look better and perform better. I'm pretty excited about this episode because we're gonna upgrade the shocks. You can see right now I still have the stock air shocks, and uh, I'm just not real happy with them. I did a 300 mile ride the other day, Every time I hit a bump, I would just cringe. I think the shocks are very hard to adjust and keep them dialed in at a certain adjustment. Going from a solo rider to a two-up rider, that's difficult too. So the people over at Rust Warnemont Designs reached out to me and said, hey, do you want to test out a set of our RS1 shocks? I'm like, heck yeah. I'm going to tell you all about the shocks and I'm going to test them on a really long ride. And if you think they're the right shocks for you, you can watch the footage on how I installed them. So let's check out these shocks. So if you guys aren't familiar with Russ Warnemont Designs, he started building off-road racing shocks back in the 1980s. Multiple Baja winner, over 35 years of shock development experience. And these shocks were made in the USA by, look who, Walker Evans. So you know these things are very well made. Let's take a look inside. All right, so we have installation instructions with some stickers and adjustment wrench. Look at those. That, my friends, is a beautiful shock. Okay, so we got some mounting hardware. Here's the shock. I already pulled the shocks out of the bags. They had plastic bags around them. Beautiful build aluminum remote reservoir shock. Here's your adjustment clickers here. Now the red knob, you're not really gonna mess with. The black knob is more or less the knob you're gonna wanna use. It's the compression knob. Some things to notice on the shocks, they use premium box springs. It's got a beefy 5 8 inch stainless steel shaft. Like I said, beautiful billet aluminum finish. These shocks have got position sensitive valving for like a smoother ride, which also gives them exceptional bottoming resistance. Then you also get digressive valving on rebound for more control when you're riding, especially when the shock's deep in the travel, like on a bigger bump. The RWD is the first to bring that technology to the Harley Davidson market. The piggyback reservoirs, what they do is they separate the oil from the nitrogen that ensures a more consistent, predictable ride. And once again, regarding the anti-bottoming, what happens is these shocks, as they get further in the stroke, they get a little bit stiffer to reduce bottoming or eliminate bottoming, actually. But what happens too, when the shocks aren't being super compressed, is you get a soft plush ride. Now, these shocks are 13 inches long. They come in variable lengths. Now, I also want to mention too, these shocks come for baggers, Dynas, Sportsters, Softtails, FXRs, in a bunch of different lengths per model. Last thing I wanna say before I mount them up and take them for a ride, um, it comes in two ways. This is the standard. So standard if you're a solo rider under 250 pounds, or if you're two up under 350 pounds. And for the heavy duty version, if you weigh over 250 pounds, you want the HD version. And if you're two up over 350, you also want the HD version. These shocks go for $9.79.99, so they're not cheap, which leads you to, tells you right there, these things are gonna be great. Best place to find them, RustWernemont.com. All right, let's see what these things look like on the bike, man. I am excited. Here's how the shocks look once they're mounted up. If you wanna see how they're installed, I'll show you that after the ride review in this video. The only thing that's a drag is now you're gonna put your saddlebags on there and hide these beautiful shocks. Before you take your first ride, there's two things you wanna adjust on your shocks. This is the slow speed compression adjuster. They recommend that you turn it all the way to the left, which is soft, counterclockwise, and then take your first ride. And then if you wanna make it stiffer, just turn it clockwise one click at a time. You can feel it get a little stubborn at each click. So next thing you wanna do is you wanna measure the preload. So what you do is you take the bike off the stand and you get on the bike, you stand it upright, but you don't sit down. I was measuring from the bottom of the ring here to the top of the spring here, just getting a measurement. Then what you wanna do is sit down on the bike and the bike should drop a half inch to three quarters of an inch. Normally if you sit on the bike and it drops more than three quarters of an inch, then what you wanna do is tighten this ring by turning it this way and what that does is it brings this up and it tightens the spring. So to do that, you'd put the bike back on the stand, get the back wheel off the ground, getting the weight off the springs. A lot of times you can just turn it. Look, I can turn that by hand right now. But if you want to turn this ring, you can take this wrench, hook it on the ring, spin the ring that way too. Keep tightening this till you get it to where you want it. Half inch, three quarters of an inch. But we're going to ride it the way it is right now and see how she performs. All right, everybody, so this initial reaction, I'm just gonna do a short ride around the city streets here. Keep in mind, I got the clickers at the lightest setting. I got the preload at the lightest setting, which is the spring. I know some bumps on this road that used to make me cringe, and our freeway here is terrible. So we're gonna hit both of those and see what we get.
Wow. All right, there's some pretty good dips back there that I just hit that normally, you know, I just dread going through there, but I have to say, this, this thing just sucked them up like no tomorrow. This street's got some pretty good dips in it too. Just, you can see all the crap in the street overall. Holy crap, man. What a difference on the low speed stuff. Granted, keep in mind that the uh, the front end on this bike is still garbage, and that's going to be fixed next. But you can still feel what the back end's doing. It's like flown on a cloud. Now, a lot of people talk about too how much better this bike corners with good shocks on it. In a couple of days, I'm actually going on a long 300 mile ride, and that'll be a real test of these shocks. This is just kind of a preliminary test without saddlebags. So I left the bags off so I can adjust the clickers easy. But the way it feels right now, I mean, I don't have to worry about it. But I can definitely feel a big difference in the back end. This road has all these little lines in it that stick up, like ridges. And the front end is kind of going kind of harsh over them. And the back end is just really plush over them. Shout out, dude. See how when I hit the front brake, see how the front end wants to dive? It's not good. All right, here's some road tracks right here. Let's see what we get. Oh, oh, Wilbur. That was smooth. Surprising. I didn't expect them to be that good. But see that freeway right there? That freeway at every joint has a ridge. So when you're going down the freeway, you feel this. It's bad, dude. Like if you're in a four wheel drive truck, you're bouncing all over the place. On a bike, it's bad too. Let's check it out. I can tell how much better the back end is because the front end is so bad. You can feel the difference big time. Let's go. 91 freeway, baby. Going 80 miles an hour. All right, this is the roughest lane right here. All right, so let me tell you what I'm feeling. What I feel is I feel the front end going clunk, 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 and the back end is just going. I've taken this bike on this freeway before. I'm telling you, man, it didn't feel this good. Even this lane here has got all kinds of choppy crap going up and down. Look at how bumpy it is right here. And it feels good, man. All right, that's enough freeway testing for now. I am impressed. I just hit a bump back there getting off the off ramp and it was kind of like a rise in the road. The front end kind of hopped over it and the back end just kind of went right over it. like, nice. Another good test would be getting the wipe on the back because the back end used to be so harsh that every time I hit bumps, she would squeeze my body with her legs. Pretty funny. There's some road tracks right here. I'm not even gonna slow down. See what happens. Oh yeah. Pretty amazing folks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sign off now from this ride. I'm gonna come back after my 300 mile ride and give you guys a much broader experience because just me ripping around town right now, it's just, you need to spend a lot more time on a bike and feel just about every kind of obstacle on the road to know what the back end's working like. But my initial response is I'm really impressed. I'm really feeling a big difference. Sometimes you wonder, Am I gonna feel a difference? Did I just spend a thousand bucks for nothing? Um, over the air shocks, night and day, I'm telling you right now. All right, everybody, I did my 300 mile ride. I threw everything at these shocks I could find. Low speed twisties, high speed sweepers, some of the roughest roads in the Southern California desert. We rode through Rocketeer Wells, we rode through Borrego Springs. Those roads are hammered. The roads were so bad when I did the ride about a week ago, the bike was just hopping all over the place. It started to swap a little bit you know, going about 80 miles an hour. It actually got a little bit scary at one point. Going through there with these shocks was a totally different experience. The back end was just soaking up the bumps. The front end was doing its little hop thing, but the back end was just smooth as could be. It was crazy. But I also did a ride with the wife on the back. Didn't have to adjust the clickers, just took off and went. I could tell the ride was much better than with the air shocks. And I asked her at the end of the day, I go, how did it feel? She's like, it felt great. So I have to say all in all, I am like super impressed with these shocks. I'll basically give them 10 out of 10 stars. So now I'm gonna show you how easy they are to install. Probably 15, 20 minutes, you've got these shocks on your bike. First thing you wanna do is you wanna take a flat scissor jack, jack your bike up, 
just you want to take the weight off the swing arm. Obviously too you want to remove both saddle bags which is super easy. And then that's a good time to come in here and clean up your whole back wheel area. I have already bled the air out of the shocks so I'm just going to push this in right here. Pull that hose out like that. Then I got my breaker bar here with a three quarter inch socket on it. See how tight these are. Not too bad. I recommend you take the bottom bolt out first. You got it, this bottom bolt, this bar is kind of in the way, so you got to come in at a little bit of an angle. Just take it nice and slow. Grab the bolt so it doesn't bang on your pipe. And when you loosen the top one, hold the shock with your hand so the shock doesn't fall on your exhaust. Like so. Now you're going to use the original bolts, so don't lose those. And when you take these shocks, be careful because the oil will come out of this hole. So, you know, keep them standing upright. Or else you're going to get oil all over the place. Okay, so we're going to mount the upper bolt first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the two stock washers, lock washer and a flat washer. Get rid of those. And these are the washers that came with the kit. So you have one like this. Then it's going to go through the shock. Then you'll have the other one like this for the top bolt. Now these shocks get mounted with the reservoir down facing the back. Both shocks are the same. There's not a left and a right. So let's just take this bolt here, slide it through the top eyelet, add the other tapered washer, and then you want to use blue Loctite on your shock bolts. And then just gently bring the shock in, get your bolt started. Hold the shock away from the axle at the bottom so it's not banging against there. You might want to stick a rag. Let's grab a rag and stuff it down there so the shock's resting on a rag. I'm just going to snug the bolt. I'm not going to tighten it just yet. Okay, for the bottom bolt, once again, we take these stock washers, get rid of those. Then this is the bracket for the right-hand side. There's a left and a right. So if the bolt is going like this, this piece is going to slip on like this. So this goes on first. You can see the nut is to the outside. Then for this one here, we use the wider collar. Then it's going to go through the shock. Then you're going to use a small collar on the other side of the shock. Put a Loctite. Just kind of pick the shock up this way to get that in. Slide that bolt in there. Let's put a rag over the exhaust. I don't like that getting scratched and then just line it up now you want to rotate this bracket up so the bolt is touching right here on the reservoir what that does is it pushes the reservoir inward to clear your saddlebags as you tighten the bolt now you can see how the reservoir is going inward as I tighten this bolt didn't move very far but it did move You'll also want to remove your air shock valve here. I have a, a T40 wrench. Let's remove this bolt right here. It wasn't so bad. It's got a tab on it. So yeah, just, oops, so just slide it downward and the, the tab right there will release. Put that back in. Probably have to take your seat off to remove all these airlines off your bike. Okay, after you get both shocks mounted up, come back here and just snug this nut right here. I notice they're kind of loose. You don't want to lose them. So just snug those down. Not real tight. I think they're nylon, they're not metal, so you don't want to over tighten that. Alright guys, thanks for watching this episode. Hope everything was helpful. Subscribe to my channel, hit the bell so you know when new episodes come out. I want to thank Russ one of my designs for sponsoring this episode, hooking me up with these awesome shocks. And see you guys next video.